Good afternoon. I'm Jae-Yung Park from Seoul National University, South Korea. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for giving me this uh, great opportunity to present our work at this uh, Humanoid Robot Forum. The title today is Compliant and Precise Control of Humanoid Robots. Uh, in our lab, uh, we believe that uh, compliant and uh, precise uh, control are both very important for human robots. So compliance is really required for dealing with uncertainties when we interact with the environment or human. So like, for example, road has to walk all the time. That means it has to interact and having contact with the ground. That can be like flat, ideally, but sometimes non-flat and uncertain. So uh, having compliant uh, motion and compliance during this uh, contact is very important for robust uh, locomotion. And uh, it has to also interact with uh, the human and environment uh, with compliance so that it can uh, have safety and uh, and so on. So uh, this is also, this is very important. And another aspect is precise and stiff uh, motion control. And uh, this is required from specific for specific manipulation and locomotion. So in our lab, we have been developing uh, these technologies using our uh, human robot Kavi. So providing compliant behavior using disturbance observer or momentum observer without using for talk sensor was one uh, direction. And uh, creating whole body uh, balancing motion using capture point and model predictive control is another one. And to uh, create more a precise control, we accommodated our compliance of the robot and our actuator bandwidth into the dynamics model so that we can have better uh, position performance. And finally, torque-based reinforcement learning, learning was have been uh, tried and, uh, pro, uh, and produced quite a nice uh, like uh, working behaviors. So this is uh, our robot Okabi. Uh, adult size humanoid robot. Uh, its uh, height is 180 centimeter and weight is 100 kilogram. So uh, this is very similar size of the main developer of the robot, uh, Jaehyun Shin, in our lab. And this is anthropomorphic design. So you can see the shapes and skeleton of human and robot are quite uh, similar. And this is the robot spe specification. Uh, it's uh, electric motor uh, uh, based and harmonic gear and Elmo motion controller was used. And uh, you can see in the upper uh, video, the uh, gravity compensation was achieved and you can see it's quite back drivable with a uh, human uh, like hand. And uh, on the bottom, you can see we are controlling CON of the robot and upper body is maintained this uh, posture, and you can see even if we change the position of the foot, uh, it's like compliantly adjust to its uh, new position because it's back drivable. Our very first attempt to create a uh, like compliant motion using uh, without using force stroke sensor was disturbance observer. So we used uh, this observer to identify the direction and magnitude, rough magnitude of the disturbance on each joint, and then use this information to move in the same direction as the disturbance of ex or external force uh, so that we can create compliant, compliance. And this was applied to the lower part of the robot. And you can see a robot walking. And when it lands, it creates compliant motion to deal with this uh, uh, impact force. And it can deal with unknown uh, object to a certain height. And all this behavior was created without using force talk sensor. Uh, another uh, attempt was to use a momentum observer to uh, estimate external torque more precisely. And here, uh, usually, the momentum observer uh, estimate external torque, but usually it uh, includes uncertainty of the modeling and friction and so on. So we used our uh, LSTM network to uh, estimate this uncertainty torque 
by training the motion in free space without collision. After that, uh, we uh, use this uh, uncertainty torque estimated by LSTM to subtract from momentum observer torque so that we can estimate Hickson torque much more precisely. So here you can see we can uh, estimate Hickson torque on all over the body. So on the left, you can see it collides with an obstacle on the knee and in the middle, uh, human collides the robot on the upper body. And even uh, we can hand guide the robot with by holding the hand and uh, guiding uh, to towards some direction. So all these motions uh, were, were achieved without using force stop sensor. Another uh, research topic that we are pursuing is whole body motion uh, generation for balancing and walking. So when we have a uh, small disturbance, we use ankle strategy. That means we can uh, try to adjust, I mean, deal with the, the, with the disturbance only with the foot uh, GMP uh, modification. However, if we have a uh, more uh, disturbance, we can create uh, different footsteps or upper body to deal with the larger disturbance. And you can see here in these videos that uh, the robot can deal with different magnitude of disturbances by using upper body, stepping motion, uh, etc. So our robot unfortunately have quite a uh, joint, uh, joint elasticity uh, at all the joints. Uh, we believe that this is mainly due to the harmonic gear. So we try to accom accommodate this joint elasticity in the modeling of the dynamics of the robot and we could achieve higher uh, position performance of the robot. And also uh, we observed that some of the motors have uh, like a lower bandwidth and this is mainly due to the large inertia that it, a certain joint has to deal with, such as the, the ankle. So ankle motor is quite small, but it has to uh, deal with large inertia when we uh, stand or when we step on something. So the idea was to uh, have a uh, different set of motors to uh, deal with uh, different bandwidth of the robot. So uh, if we want to create like low bandwidth motion, then we use all the motors. But if we want to create certain stiff and precise motion, then we choose only high band mo uh, actuators to create this uh, stiffness. So it's kind of a stepwise uh, use of the uh, actuators to create motion, and it was quite successful. Finally, uh, torque based reinforcement learning was tried. Uh, in our lab, uh, most of the times people try to create target pose uh, or target motion uh, using reinforcement learning. However, if you do that, then at the lower level, you also have to create motion controller or tune uh, PD controllers. So to avoid this uh, kind of uh, additional tuning after learning, so we have tried direct uh, learning of uh, torques on all of the, the joints of the robot. And we believe that this uh, uh, will create uh, a better uh, reality gap due to its uh, inherent uh, lines. You can see on the left, uh, position-based RL has a little bit less uh, robustness to uh, uncertainty of the ground. However, torque-based RL has better uh, adjustment to this uh, uncertain or unknown object. And with this uh, torque-based reinforcement learning, we created uh, more uh, interesting behaviors, like push recovery and uh, trained with motion capture data and it can walk quite fast naturally and it can create step-down motion from uh, stairs without knowing the exact height of the step. Finally, we have to use a robot uh, in real world. And uh, with this uh, recent uh, great uh, development of AI technologies, I think we will have 
AI humanoid prison. I think very intelligent humanoid robot that can reason and that can uh, uh, interact with the ro human and other robots naturally. However, it will take some time and for and also for some specific cases, we really want to control the robot directly as we want. So uh, avatar robot technology or teleoperation technology is, I think, on, on another aspect and we can uh, or try to use to deploy our human robot in the real environment. Thank you very much.